Hey guys, uh, welcome back to my channel. We're gonna be cur uh, we're gonna be covering uh, machine learning and uh, cybersecurity in a prime example. You guys see this company right here? They actually use machine learning in production. Some of these other companies are starting to lean towards it too, to automate cybersecurity jobs, and it can do more and heavy lifting. Therefore, it can save a lot of companies a lot of money and a lot of time and it can do more work. However, there's an issue. As you guys know, with machine learning engineering and production, wherever the industry is, whatever the data is, there's an issue with model drift. If the model is not being hyperparameter tuned constantly and retrained on new data often, there is often model drift where it's making bogus predictions. But the danger here, guys, is Rather than damaging uh, doctor-patient trust in uh, AI and uh, medical field, this is actually more. Uh, this can actually be more dangerous if you uh, have model drift, because it may not. Uh, it may predict an actual intrusion is actually, um, you know, benign, not an intrusion. And that can be very uh, damaging depending on what he intruded in and if he encrypted anything, you know? Because uh, what if it were a power plant or a hospital? It doesn't matter. The point is, um, you know, uh, the damage, ransomware, what you name it, malware, just mischief. That's the problem. Um, therefore, we need to... If you guys ever get into this, you guys need to train the model on very um, well-rounded uh, IP address data. Example, guys, see my other video for IP Insights algorithm with SageMaker, where you uh, the distance between the two types of IP addresses with that built-in SageMaker algorithm. It's very sensitive. It only does IP addresses, and uh, it detects the difference between the two. And then it predicts data, you know, the difference between the two. Meaning, if the distance is very great, it's probably malignant. If it's very far, I mean, if it's very close, it's it's good. Closer the better. Anyways, guys, um, uh, just so you guys know... Um, uh, I've got a lot of other videos on my channel. I got 130. So I got ML pipelines with SageMaker. I got Google Cloud deployments. I got AI and ML web apps with Streamlit. Later, guys, I'm going to do a Django with uh, machine learning as well. I'm planning on doing that later down the road. And then that one guy who requested doing a SageMaker video with reinforcement learning, I'll get to that too. Although I do have some open AI gym SageMaker videos. I got some clustering videos. Check out my channel. I'm sure I, if you're here for something, there's something you need on my channel. You name it, I got it. I got just data science videos, neural networks, convolutional neural networks, including convolutional neural network AI web app. So uh, check out my channel. Um, I got image processing. I got color extraction and pictures. You guys name it, I got it. I've even got varied SageMaker models without the pipelines, just deployments by themselves. So I got Cinemas Analysis, Cinema Analysis Web Apps. So if you're here for already, don't be a stranger. Check, check out my channel, check out my playlists. I've even got clustering DNA results. Like if you took a DNA test with a Ancestry company, you can download the raw data and then you can do uh, my little project where you cluster your results. Yeah, I've even got the video where you can classify and detect genes also from that data set on Kaggle. You, you can predict the model on your data, on your DNA data. Anyways, guys, as you guys know, there's a problem with uh, cybersecurity and machine learning because some of the hackers are probably more sophisticated and uh, they might be in other countries where, um, you know, the 
the, their authorities really don't care about them hacking people in other countries. Therefore, they may hack, uh, if they want to hack somebody in America, they, like a company, they may hack a local computer nearby. Therefore, because they know the IP address will, isn't, won't you know, raise any, any alarms if they intrude carefully. So they use that as a launch pad to uh, you know, hack uh, a, a company. That's why these data sets, if you guys ever develop any, they got to be very varied. Of course, cybersecurity gets complicated. There's NIST framework. We get into a whole new profession, but we're just doing the machine learning engineering part. Then we get into ethical hacking. We get into all kinds of stuff, just cybersecurity analysts, which this, um, you know, does the job for the people at the monitors, you know. That way, if you're a cybersecurity, that way you don't need to hire a bunch of employees at the monitors or whatever. However, you need to make sure your uh, model is robust. And uh, as you can see, they prevent and they detect and they respond and they heal. Uh, I don't know this company personally. Of course, I've never been a customer. I don't have my own company. Uh, I'd probably do it myself. <laughs> Anyways, just to save money. Or I'd know who to hire and everything else. Anyways, guys, um, just so you guys know, AI and ML is being used in every field. You name it, not just doctor, patient, trust, but every field. It's even being used in pharmaceutical companies to discover what drug works best. In fact, see my other video for that. I've got a SageMaker pipeline video for that. And I got an, a, an ML web app for that as well. Drug classification. I mean, what they're talking about is a neural network to discover, you know, and recommend drugs. Just like uh, neural networks are being used in a lot of things. People get pretty creative with them. See a lot of my other videos. I've even got... Um, uh, sequence models, you name it, I got it for translating. Remember, guys, uh, check out my channel. If there's something, there's something you need if you're here already. And I'm going to try to get to everything. And uh, feel free to leave a comment, uh, you know, letting me know what kind of videos you guys want to do. Okay, guys, now uh, let's get here. Let's get started. Okay, I chose this data set because this one sounds something I want to do creatively. Okay, now uh, let's get to it. You guys see the summary right here, right? We're going to fit the TDI vectorizer in the project for this one. Why? Because it's got a description. That's a pretty good tool. Why would I simply want to label and code the whole data frame and turn them into numbers? Wouldn't I want to fit a description to get the more out of my model, right? And then uh, go through it and then uh, let's get to the code, guys. That's why you guys are here. Okay, guys, unzip it or read it as it is. It doesn't really matter with the zip file when you download it. Pandas, read it. DF info. So guys, take a look right here, and you guys can tell uh, we're going to uh, do a couple of them. We're going to fit the summary with the TDI of Vectorizer, and uh, let's get to it. There it is in the data frame. The location of the breached information in the summary. We're not going to do it the traditional way when I do classification models on supervised learning. We're going to... We're going to do it this way. The summary, location of breached information, summary, data breach, location of breach, and then we're going to factorize. Test train split, the summary, and the location of the breached information. Label and code, but not the traditional way. TDIF vectorizer, we're going to fit the summary, remember? Transform, transform, X train, and X test. We're going to use a random forest classifier. 
However, if you guys want to use another model and you guys want to get it more accurate or even hyper tune the parameters like I do in my other videos, feel free. Don't be a stranger. Fit, X train, Y train, predict, accuracy score, 86%. Now, guys, uh, that may not sound great, but the F1 score for this is pretty good. Remember, guys, let's say I got a 98% accuracy score, but it had an F1 score of 10%. That's pretty terrible. That kind of cancels out your accuracy score, so the F1 score is pretty good. E even if I had a 78% accuracy score, but the F1 score was 98, 96%, uh, the F1 score would excuse it. <coughs> Anyways, guys, import the classification report because uh, we're going to do a little cross-validating. Okay, the comp mat. Remember, guys, this is how we show non-technical people also in the business world confusion matrices with this comp mat function. Okay, and you guys can change the title as well. And you guys uh, know enough in machine learning. You guys see 93%? You guys know enough about machine learning to know true label and predicted label. Anyways, guys, there's a little bit of a class imbalance. That's what I was going to get at. Um... Therefore, if you guys want the best model, just like you know in machine learning, even if it's very accurate and there was an under, uh, you know, a class imbalance, remember a class imbalance may not play well in uh, production. That's why we, uh, we get into the data science side. That's why the technical side lacks a little data science, and then the data science side... Um, you know, lacks what machine learning engineering guys do. That's why the best teams are a mix sometimes. Okay. A lot of data scientists are really uh, machine learning engineers. They just have the data science title because they're actually taking it to production. However, some of them uh, lack uh, the data science side and they run into trouble with getting models accurate enough for production. Or they're accurate enough, but the problem is it's making bogus predictions because the model is has too much of a class imbalance, even though it's passing for production. See my SageMaker videos. I, I go into depth about a lot of that. Anyways, guys, um, the category ID, the breach information, the type of breach, drop duplicates and sort the values... The type of breach, category to ID, the dictionary, values. Okay, and then the dictionary of the category IDF, type of breach, location, values. Fig size, you guys can change this right here in this matplotlib if you guys wanted a different size. Okay, and then the type of breach, the location of the breached information values. Cyber, the title, the X and the Y, actual and predicted. This one is more in-depth that you may be able to show technical people. You guys see? Okay. Now, guys, uh, feel free to share some of my videos if you guys uh, know anybody who wants to learn anything about machine learning in the field already or just something, hey, this is kind of interesting, you know, you'd be helping me out a lot and you might be helping them out too. Now, guys, uh, remember, uh, my my channel uh, before used to be more on the machine learning engineering side. Now I'm getting back to the data science side. See some of my open AI gems for reinforcement learning. See some of my other videos. You name it, I got it. Check out the channel, for real. And also, guys, uh, you guys might want to explore cybersecurity. Even if you guys are working already, but you guys are in a different field, this is where all the money's going. Just like reinforcement learning engineers, 
might want to learn for self-driving cars. Because remember, guys, uh, AI is the future, non-technical people say. Although uh, they really mean reinforcement learning and machine learning also. They just, that's why the non-technical people just say AI. Anyways, guys, um, just so you guys know, um, is cybersecurity, a lot of these companies are dabbling in it, but they can't get it right. Like how I said, Dark Trace is the only one that supposedly got it right. So, um, do, you know, if you learn cybersecurity, machine learning, ML ops, uh, get good enough, might want to apply to this company or see if they're hiring. Just an idea. And uh, one more thing, uh, Kegel, if you guys want to apply my uh, video where it's got a description to another project, another data set, don't be a stranger. Feel free. And you guys just want to apply my code. Also, guys, leave a comment uh, for uh, any... Uh, leave a comment for any, uh, you know... Anything you guys might want me to do. I'm going to get back on the cloud when I get more subscribers and do that one uh, requester's thing for the reinforcement learning. Anyways, guys, uh, remember, guys, I'm here for you guys. And uh, I'd appreciate it if you guys left comments. Uh, just leave a comment about whatever. Or if you guys want to uh, me to do something in particular. And on some projects, I do offer code and the video's already on there. Now, uh, you guys can also subscribe to become members because in the future, I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to be uh, doing possibly some private videos like some Google Cloud ML Pipeline videos and then members only. And uh, if you guys want to donate to the channel, you guys can. Remember, any way you can help support me is fine. Anyways, guys, uh, check out my other videos and stay tuned. Be sure to hit like and subscribe. Thank you, guys. Till next time. Bye.